Hi, everyone. My name is Wan Yi Kuo, W A N hyphen Y E E, last name K U O, and I'm the project manager for the Holden Natural Drainage System Project for SPU. I'm giving you all a mid design update. Last time we have connected with the community in this capacity was March. It's time for us to give you an update. First, I'd like to talk a little bit about the overview of the slideshow. We are going to be talking about the project background. Then we will be delving into what have been what the team has been working on. And I will go into the mid design updates and then we'll talk about next steps. Right, let's jump into project background. So what is the problem that our project is trying to solve? As you all know, living in the Northwest, uh, especially in Seattle, we rain quite a bit. And when it rains, the rain drop falls onto surfaces such as roadway, alley, rooftop, and it carries a mix with a lot of the pollutant that's on the street um, and uh, other sources. And this polluted water would eventually goes into the creek system. In this case, it will be Longfellow Creek or Duwamish River, and then it goes into the Puget Sound. So the polluted stormwater is not good for our environment nor for public health. And each year about 12 million pounds of uh, polluted water get discharged into our water body. So this really impact our um, basically the environment and we should do something about that. So what are we going to do is to put in natural drainage system? So you may ask, why do we want to use natural drainage system? Well, as development occurs over the years, there are some consequences and impact that I just talked about that happen to our environment. And we are really just finding out as we learn more about them. Now, we know we cannot go back time to where land was a forest, but we can retrofit a city city to help it function more like the native forest land it once was. So natural drainage system essentially emulate nature. They collect uh, rainwater and remove pollutants before they get to reach into our stream and waterways. So lots of benefit that uh, we can realize using NDS. Uh, first one would be obviously improving the stormwater system um, drainage quality, uh, water quality. We're going to be increasing landscaping diversity and adding perhaps some new street trees. A lot of time, NDS is built between the roadway and a sidewalk, so it kind of serves as a buffer from moving cars when you're walking around the neighborhood. Because there are plans, we're adding more plans, so there will be improving uh, improvement of air quality. And studies show that it provides some noise reduction, depends on the plants that we are putting in our system. And also best of all is really the maintenance is done by SPU. We are not asking any of the adjacent property owner to work on the, the NDS at all. So you may ask, well, how, how do these systems work? How do NDS systems work? Well, it's usually a, to the right hand side, you can see a 3D drainage diagram of an NDS system. So typically it's the swell, I call it the end drainage system, looks like a swell or a shallow depression. It's built between the sidewalk and the roadway. As you can see, when drainage water coming through and carrying pollutant coming through the street, it will enter the drainage, um, the NDS system through what we call a curb cut, basically an opening at the curb. Once they enter the system, it will filter through a lot of the vegetation and um, a lot of time it ponds in the swell for about six to seven inches and then it normally drained within 24 hours of a stormwater event. I mean, storm event. And while it's being collected in the bottom of the swell, uh, 
it will filter through the soil, um, what we call the um, filtering soil. And oh, sorry, let me go back. Filtering soil and uh, eventually will get collected in the under drain. It's as depicted at uh, legend number 10. So when the water, this dirty water get filtered, you can actually, to the left of the 3D diagram, you can see the before and after photo of the drastic difference, even just by visual inspection. This is one of the samples comparison that uh, was collected for another project. So indeed, the water would be filtered through the bio um, biofilter material, and it will come back just nicer and cleaner. Eventually, it will get to the sound, and we can all enjoy it. So what do natural drainage system NDS look like? So you can look at uh, from the left hand side, before we come and install NDS, your street may look like uh, basically a typical roadway with some planting strip and then maybe a sidewalk. But after we finished and uh, we after we just finished our project, you will see that there's uh, probably a depression instead of a flat planting strip. It will be a swell like um, features between sidewalk and roadway and you can see those baby plants being planted on the swell. Um, you know plants are living things so it takes a couple of years for it to be fully established. So the in the beginning you see all these sparse baby plants and then year one you will see more of the plants it will grow bigger and lusher and then by year two or three it should be fully mature. Now, keep in mind, planting uh, plants are living things, so they do change how they look um, with the different seasons. So you may, in the winter time, it will look very different from, say, summertime. Now, there are these are a couple examples of uh, the different NDS that we have installed throughout the city. SPU has been working on installation of NDS system for the last more than 10 years already. So you can see quite a few different type of NDS throughout the city, uh, different watershed. Um, the left hand side, I'd like to point out that's uh, at Southwest Kenyon Street at 17th Southwest. That's actually only maybe two blocks away from our project area. So when if you are from the community, you may already seen it. But the rest of the other photos are showing you the ones that we had in West Seattle and Ballard and North Seattle. They were all built in different time and we have been learning a lot about plants. Uh, through the last 10-15 mm, years. So right now we have a pretty set selection of plant palette that we know it's going to work well for the system. And typically we pick from the pan, plant palette for the NDS planting. I'm going to give you a little sneak preview of what kind of plants we are thinking. So um, on the left hand side is the what we call the NDS plantings. Um, just different type of plants that we are going to be putting at the pretty much the bottom of the swell. And then on the side, there's um, landscaping plant. We distinguish between uh, NDS planting and landscaping plant because NDS planting are specific plants that we know it's going to function to help filter the stormwater. But landscaping plants, they are really more just landscaping for landscaping purpose. You know, so they don't necessarily have any mm, water filtering function inherently to themselves. So what have been we been working on since early spring? Let's see. Well, last time we uh, presented our early design to the community, we were focusing on um, we were focusing on uh, basically putting NDS on the south side of the uh, Holden Street between 16th and 17th. So you can see there's the yellow line, which is the uh, curb line we are going to 
basically moved the curb line out and then installed the, you can see the green rectangle. Those are symbols for the NDS system. We're building NDS system on the south side of Holden. At that time, we were not sure we will be um, eliminating a parking or not. And then we are also proposing to add NDS uh, on the east side of 17th. As you can see, the green rectangle on the east side of 17th. And on top of the NDS, we know that we will be adding a lot of curb ramp at the intersection of 16th and Holden. We just at that time, we don't know how many and exactly what type. And we know that we also will be doing some curb ramp at the intersection of 17th and Holden. And on top of that, at that point, we were also evaluating if we would be adding some NDS to the south side of Holden, but west of 17th. So you can see the bubble at the, the cloud area at the left hand side or the west side. So that is the gist of our 2023 early design concept that we've presented to the community. So after, after our presentation, we have collected a lot of your input and we kind of grouped them into different themes. The themes that we heard from the community is people are having a lot of uh, thoughts and concern about traffic and construction impact. And a lot of people are curious about the plant selection for the landscaping area and wondering if we're gonna be keeping the speed cushion on Southwest Holden. Also, um, lots of inquiry about the, the future of the Seattle City Light property at the Southwest corner of 16th and Holden because that property has been vacant for a number of years and there's always been talk about turning it into something uh, something more functional or beneficial to the community and then the, in general we hear a lot of support for this project we were very delighted to hear that and really this also became a became a opportunity for our public to learn a little bit about Longfellow Creek and water quality. So these are kind of the themes that we heard from our community during our spring outreach. So since then, what has the team been working on? Well, we took a lot of the input and then we work on basically honing in on a lot of the technical design. And the left side is, kind of bulleted out are the things that we've been working on. We were able to refine our project area. We're able to determine the better the type, the sizes and the location of our NDS. And we know that we're gonna propose a new speed cushion now. And we have determined the new and redesigned ramp, curb ramp types and location. Uh, we, know, we know where they need to be now and how many of them there are. And we also were able to confirm our roadway width and configuration with SDOT, Seattle Department of Transportation. We do know now we are removing the parking from the south side of Southwest Holden Street. We're hoping that we can keep, this, keep the parking on the south side, even though we're adding the NDS system there, but we could not make that work. So we will be eliminating the parking on the south side. Um, we also have identified area that needs construction coordination with property owners. There might be, when, if you're one of those property owners, we'll be reaching out to you soon. And of course, we have uh, an idea what kind of planting that we would like to be um, installed around the um, NDS system. So on top of the technical work, we have not been slowing down on coordination, trust me. We have been talking to different uh, sister agencies and like SDOT, SCL, and PSE, and fire department. Um, so now we are ready to um, talk a little bit about our design update. So what's new? Here I'm presenting a plan view of our natural drainage system. This is our 60% design now. I like to focus on, let's talk about where the NDS systems are. First of all, all the green that you're seeing here is where the location where we are putting 
the NDS system. We are keeping the NDS on the south side of Holden Street between 16th and 17th, as you can see. Effectively, again, we are replacing, we are eliminating the parking in that area. And we are, we have decided we're going to add um, more NDS system west of the 17th and hold the intersection. At 30%, at we were just contemplating that, but right now we've decided we are going to add more NDS in that, in that corner of the southwest corner of 17th and Holden. Now, what the big change is that we have eliminated the NDS system that we originally proposed on 30 per, uh, on our early design at the east side of 17th, because after further analysis, we realized that this the system that we were proposing on 17th and the east side, it's not really treating enough pollutant to warrant um, the construction and the maintenance cost. So we have decided we're gonna eliminate the system. So now let's talk about ADA ramps. We talk, you know, we were at the at the early design. We know that we'll be doing a lot of the ramp um, update or configuration at intersection of 16th, 16th and Holden. Now we know that all eight ramps at 16th and Holden, so you can see on the right hand side where the intersections are, will be re will be redone. So they will be ADA compliance, and that would be really great for the community and uh, any um, and pedestrian. So let's move on to the seventh intersection of 17th and Holden. Now, where originally or right now, what you see when you go out to the community is you can see the painted bulb, actually bulbs, on the south side of Holden at intersection 17th and Holden. So this project is going to what we call formalizing it, which means we're going to be building we're going to be building the um, the ADA ramp, replacing. It's no longer going to be painted. It's just going to be in a normal concrete uh, ADA ramp design. So we will be formalizing it. So on the north side of intersection 17th and South Holden, you can also see that we are adding two companion, what we call companion ramps to the formalized uh, ADA ramps. So we will be adding basically four new ramps in the intersection of 17th. Um, currently, there's actually there are actually two eight, uh, ramp uh, ser serving to cross uh, between seven uh, crossing on 17th. We will be upgrading those two as well to make sure that it's ADA compliance. So essentially, you're getting six nice new ramps on 17th and then we're getting eight upgraded ramps on 16th so a total of let's say eight plus six is for 14 ramps um next thing i want to mention is that in the middle of the um hold uh holden uh you look at legend four where the existing cushion is we are going to be uh, retaining that but we will be making modification so we, you will still have a speed cushion but it will look slightly different but it will function very similar to the one we already have right there and we are not removing any street trees so the next this slide is showing you a cross-section a more represented cross-section view of the street. Uh, if you look at the lower left-hand corner, we you can see where we take a cut at uh, section AA on the street and section BB, the location of this representative uh, section. Uh, let's look at A first. This is what we call an NDS with sloped size. So basically it looked like a a swell. So when you are walking on the south side on your sidewalk, you will see between the street and the sidewalk, again, this 
is where the NDS will be. And you will see a depression, um, I call that a shallow depression with planting at the bottom and on the side. And the bottom plant, bottom is where the, mm, what we call the NDS planting. The plants would be working really hard to filter the dirty storm water. And the water will be ponding on top of the bottom at the bottom um, about six inches above the bottom of the swell and it will infiltrate through the infiltrating soil and clean up the storm water and eventually get collected in the under drain so as you move beyond the uh, nds system you are basically on the roadway now so you will see that you'll have true travel lane and on the north side, the parking lane will remain and we are not touching any of the sidewalk. We're not changing sidewalk on the north side. So again, we're showing that um, we will be taking up the, um, the parking on the south end. Now, section B is basically the same configuration, but it's it's basically cut at where we are bumping out the curb even further. So you can see that uh, you will have even a little bit narrower street corridor. So you still have two travel lanes and you guys still have the parking lane and you will see probably a slightly bigger um, surface area of the NDS system. All right, next slide, we're gonna be showing you a different type of NDS with vertical walls. That's what we call it. Remember I talked about um, how the NDS plants is at the bottom of the swell. So that's the area really we needed to treat water. So the, we want to maximize our area at the bottom. Um, in this particular location, because of the amount of pollutant and the amount of water we're collecting, we needed more bottom area. So one way to maximize the bottom area is uh, basically created a vertical side. So as you can see, this is not a two-sided slope swell. It's actually one side is a, a vertical wall, a very shallow, shallow, uh, vertical um, partition wall, I would just call that. And then on the other side, it's a slope. And this is all because we want to maximize the bottom area. And then as you move beyond the NDS uh, section, you will then go into travel lane. Again, you have two travel lanes and a parking on the north side, and we're not really touching anything beyond um, anything on the north uh, sidewalk. Um, Let's see. So at section D is basically a similar concept, but this this section happened to be where we actually had a little bit more step out zone, what we call a step out zone. So you see a little bit more. Um, you can see a little bit more buffer between the NDS system and the travel lane. I just want to mention that we are trying hard to uh, make more dial in our design a little bit more so we can do less of this wall type of uh, swell. At this point, we're not sure. Um, I, I think we can eliminate some, but we're not sure we can eliminate all. So we like to be transparent and just let the community know that you will be seeing some of some type of vertical wall. Um, NDS system. So where are we at as far as timeline? We are in the middle of design and sometimes we call that 60% design phase. And uh, we are going to be completing our design sometimes probably end of, towards the end of April. I mean, sorry, end of spring. And then we will be advertising that towards the end of the year next year. So I think construction is likely start uh, spring 2025. So what are the next steps? All right, next step is that we're gonna go through final design, obviously, and we will be continuing to have conversation with you about the project. And we will try to incorporate your feedback wherever possible, and we will be updating our cost estimate. Then after that, we'll be 
going out to bid and award the project to a contractor and then we'll start construction. All right. All right, uh, before I go into saying thank you, I want to talk a little bit about what you might be, um, why it's a, such a crucial time for the community to tell us uh, your thoughts, because we would like to hear if you have any specific concern of your of our design or any special accommodation you needed during you would need during construction. And I also want to talk a little bit about during construction, what can you expect, even though it's more than a year away. So during the um, construction time, there will be a SPU resident engineer or inspector on site. Uh, if it's not on site the whole time, you'll be there. He or she will be there frequently. They will be check. He or she will be checking the project periodically and be available to address any of the day to day construction coordination and issue that the contractor or the adjacent property um, residents homeowner might have. And you will see that the contractor will be putting out notices on parking restriction, traffic and pedestrian reroute information, what you would typically see in a construction zone. And uh, the contractor will be staging their equipment tools or material most likely in the right of way. Uh, they will have to pay for street use and they will get the permit from SDOT. So it is they are incentivized to uh, keep the footprint small and the duration short because they're going to be paying for it. And then we will be making sure that the garbages and the collection and the mail services are not interrupted. And then, of course, we will be in the contractor and our inspector will be coordinated, coordinating with our neighbors on the driveway access or anything that you need it during our construction time. Um, we also will be sending out project update to the neighborhood. And uh, of course, you can always contact me if you have any questions. Uh, here's my information. I hope. Um, you learn a little bit more about our mid design update. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me or write an email to us. Thank you for your time. And I hope to hear from